Number 15 is not bad, it's neutral, because it's temptation. And what's temptation? It's Lucifer, the same Christ, a manifestation of the Christ, giving us the test. And most of people never pass the test. But we are never given a test that cannot be passed. for downloading this podcast. My name is Richard Rucroft. You're listening to Gnostic Lectures. This is lecture number 15. This is another Conversations About Gnosis lecture. This is part three. My guest today, my host today, my co-host, I keep calling him all those different things, but Mr. E. Jim G. Ross. How are you today, Jim? Fine. Thank you, Rick. Thank you for inviting me. You know, it's a real pleasure. It's, It's an honor to be here. So this being a conversations about Gnosis, it's sort of we're going to be talking back and forth about um, many different subjects, hopefully on this podcast. But one of the things that came up before we started the recording was some people feel that our lectures have far too much information in them. And I disagree completely. I think Samuel Anver wrote 70 books. That's a lot. And thousands of lectures have been transcribed, and that's a lot also. And we need to curate the information for the general public, I think, because it's where does a student start? I mean, there's so much work, isn't there? Yes, yeah. Well, essentially, you know, um, Samael Onveor, you know, I never met him personally. I met his wife, uh, an amazing superior individual who uh, very much alive, you know. He is actually the spiritual leader that we still don't know. Humanity is not aware that he's leading us into the future. He's a man coming from the past and meeting with us in the future, you know, which is, we can call it a new golden age is coming. So most of people would disagree with that, but that means we're facing the end of our actual so-called civilization. And also after that, a new civilization will emerge from the ashes of our actual civilization. We don't want to scare anybody, but this is the real reality. Samuel and Ware did, never wanted us really to focus on his life very much. He wanted us to focus on the material gnosis, right? That's correct. So he always said, don't follow me. And we are telling the same idea to the entire human race. Don't follow us, but follow your real being. Follow your inner being, your inner God. You know, your spiritual, immortal spiritual being that lives within each one's heart. Our real being, you know, is the one who is our inner master. So we should listen and follow you know, our inner being. You know, Jim, I just listened to all of our previous uh, lectures. That's a lot of hours of listening, but I had um, an opportunity being on, 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 uh, in a vehicle for long hours. One of the things that strikes me about every lecture that we've done so far is the ego. The ego, the ego, the ego. Now, our listeners may wonder, why are we concentrating so much on the ego? It's the elephant in the room. The thing that no other school, uh, esoteric school or, or any other scientific study, will even hint at the notion of the ego being our most dreaded enemy. And that's, I guess, we're trying to explain why are we focusing so much on the ego? There's an answer to that, right? Yeah, well, you know, from different angles, you know, it's incredible what Samael Onveor has done. It's like, what is the real cure, if there is any cure for our entire human race, you know? What's the root of all tragedies and dramas 
and all kind of problems that we are facing every day as an individual and also as a collective society. You know, Socrates, a man that left thousands of years ago, before Jesus Christ appeared, appeared physically on earth, Socrates said, people not only don't know, but we don't know that we don't know. We ignore that we ignore. And the tragedy is that we are convinced that we know and we don't know. So we are like, we're telling lies to ourselves. And we said it in other lectures, you know, that we, we stopped being hungry and thirsty for knowledge. When we do that, we stop learning, you see. And of course, ignorance is a sin and knowledge is power. So we should fall in love with knowledge because excellence means knowledge plus knowledge plus knowledge. Mediocrity is limited knowledge, and this is the tragedy. Our entire human race has fallen into a mediocrity, constant behavior. This is why there are no leaders, only followers, and that's another human tragedy. So the ego is the same subconscious, unconscious, infraconscious perception of reality. Is there any real perception of reality which is conscious? The answer is yes, because there is a, a common ground for all of us. Many people say, oh, there are so many truths, as many truths as people live on earth, billions of different truths. It looks like that, but it's not real. This is telling lies to ourselves. This is the ego. The ego is trying to justify our mediocrity, our ignorance, you know, trying to stand up when we don't even know how to walk, you see, and this is the tragedy. So basically, we have to, the purpose of life now is to learn to transform subconscious and unconscious and infraconscious into conscious perception of reality. Jim, can I expand on that a little bit? Of course, yes. I know, I'm going to talk about hypnosis. And I know a lot of Gnostic people will be saying, oh, wow, that's, that's bad, that's bad. It is bad. Samuel Anvur has said, stay away from hypnosis. But I've studied it. And I've never, ever had occasion to practice it on another human being. There was always something inside of me that said, no, don't do that. Okay? But I think you're talking about unconscious. You're talking about subconscious. This is exactly what the hypnotists use. And I'd like to say that from my studies of how hypnotism works, by the way, our, our dear listeners may be of the opinion that sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't work. Believe me, the people that are experts at this sort of thing can hypnotize you in five seconds. Okay. And I'd like to explain why it's bad. And the closest correlation I can come to is describing an orchestra. You have the person at the front of the orchestra with, with the, uh, the stick conducting the orchestra. Well, if you imagine all of the players of all of the instruments as different egos, different negative aspects within yourself, then the hypnotist comes along and he takes that 3% consciousness, that, that little spark of awareness that we have, and he sends it off and mesmerizes it um, preoccupies it, uh, gives it a little job to do, you know, f uh, fascinates it somehow, uh, and gets it out of the way. The, the, the three percent is removed from what's going to happen. And then the hypnotist is now conducting the orchestra of all these egos, and he can make, let's say, the trombone player is one type of ego, and the violin player is another type of ego. The hypnotist can conduct the orchestra and make that person do whatever he wants because he knows he can just pull on different egos and rather than destroying them as he should be he's uh, manipulating them playing with them they become a toy you're wanting to take control of another individual to take control of their their life another thing that Samuel Anver said was neuro-linguistic programming, which is sort of an extension of hypnosis. Um, most people have never heard of it, NLP. 
I'm, I remember very clearly Samuel and Weir said to stay away from that. Well, who uses this and how does it work? It's, um, I can give an example. If you listen to certain newscasts, particularly Fox News, I've noticed it on because I listened to it. The commentator will throw in little words here and there that don't seem to make any sense to the sentence whatsoever. Just, um, and that's neuro-linguistic programming. Because most people are listening to the news, watching the news, with um, fading in and out consciousness. Those neuro-linguistic words will go right inside the person and they will accept them as fact. And it happens all the time. It happens on, on mass media. And I can give another example of reverse speech analysis. And I remember when I was doing this myself years ago, I uh, made a recording and according to reverse speech, you play the audio backwards and it uncovers all kinds of um, words that are being said in reverse that reveal what's going on inside the person. Well, I'm totally convinced that um, the experiments I've done with myself and with the recordings I've, I've played with, it's 100% egos. You're listening to the egos. It even said so in one of my own recordings. Egos, egos, egos. You're listening to hundreds, thousands of egos that just keep coming in and out if you play a recording backwards. There's so much technology, so much knowledge out there. All, every one of them plays with the egos, uh, tries to manipulate the egos. If you're um, not a successful businessman, you can go to a hypnotist and he will uh, uncover what egos inside of you are preventing you from becoming successful. Well, that's not destroying the ego. That's just manipulating the ego. And all of these technologies and methodologies, that's the, the thing that Samuel and Ver says that people don't do, and they have to do, is destroy the ego. Not play with them, not toy around with them, not make a business of it, but actually destroy it. Because unless you get that 3% consciousness expanded to 4%, 5%, 6%, you're always going to be dominated by the egos. Let's take smoking. You can go to a hypnotist and you will uh, go on into a trance. And what does the hypnotist do? He knows that you have an ego of smoking because it's a habit. So he manipulates the ego so that uh, that becomes suppressed. He doesn't kill it, just pushes it aside, makes sure it becomes inactive. But like all egos, if you die in this lifetime and are reborn again, guess what? Exactly the same time you started smoking in this lifetime, in the next lifetime, you will start smoking again because that ego is not destroyed. You have to destroy the ego. If you drink, yes, you can go to a hypnotist and get help. And all of the addictions are egos. And the hypnotist has only the power to manipulate them and decide, well, this one is going, just like the conductor of the orchestra, this one is going to be strong today, the other one's going to be quiet for a while, but the egos are still there. And that's the danger with all of this black magic. As Samuel Enver calls it, it really is black magic. So do you agree with what I've said? Yes, yes, I do, Rick. Yeah, Samuel is really brilliant when he expresses the same ideas, you know, from different points of view, different angles. You know, and this is the tragedy that our scientists, our psychiatrists, our psychologists today, they teach that the ego is okay, that we need the ego. And even they invented the concept of alter ego, which is a superior ego. And they say we need the ego to survive, you know. It sounds very intelligent, but it is not. The point now is that the ego is our, as we said, subconscious, unconscious, infraconscious is the same Satan of all religions. You see, the opposite of ego is consciousness or soul. Soul is a religious, you know, term for consciousness. And the soul is the bridge, the bridge, the connection between our real being, our spirit, our divine, immortal inner being and the mind 
and the body and the emotions and the rest of our inner nature. So the soul is extremely important. The problem is when we develop the ego, the ego is a living force within ourselves. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a lot of tiny little eyes that all of, all of them together create within ourselves a big monster that eats our soul, our will, our creative willpower, eats our thoughts, eats our emotions, and even our sexual life. All illnesses, mental, physical, or emotional, come from the ego. You know, the ego is our inferior nature. And the tragedy is that because in our modern times, we stopped respecting philosophy. You know, philosophy, we don't have a clear philosophy in our modern times. We have, you know, the modern philosophies are concentrated into two or three different conceptions of reality, social life, you know. The monarchies, you know, uh, are a kind of philosophy that is still very much alive, where they say that kings and queens and people with nobility titles are, you know, inspired by the divinity to be here to rule the world. And based on that, you know, we have a capitalist perception that descended from the monarchies where some people were born to command and other people were born to serve. You know, some people were born to be leaders and others were born to be slaves or followers. What about communist ideas, Marxist Leninist ideas, the um, domination of the Communist Party? In this case, they call it the dictatorship of the proletariat. Yeah. The, the dictatorship of the proletariat is opposite to the dictatorship of the multinational corporations. So, and the problem is with those three conceptions about reality, we create more confusion than anything else because capitalist ideas and, and communist ideas uh, based on Marxist Leninist uh, perception of reality create a constant confrontation. They call it the struggle of the classes. And that struggle of the classes means it will never end. It's a struggle that will never end. So instead of uniting the entire human race, divide us all. You know, it's like trying to put all of us in the same boat and without realizing that people have different kind of talents, different kind of capabilities. We are similar, but we are not equal. So basically, a new society, to, to be able to create a more human society, we need to get rid of the ego because, you know, all these philosophies, modern philosophies, are based on egotistic perception of reality. The ego is also me, 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 number one, number two, number three, me first, me second, me third, me a million times. I don't care about anybody else. And this is capitalist ideas, you know, based on that. This is communist ideas, me, 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 me. I don't care about anybody else. And the monarchies, you know, have collapsed, being replaced by these two other alternatives. So the common, the modern kings are the multinational corporation or the leaders of the Communist Party. We are replacing one, you know, egotistic idea by other egotistic ideas. So it's a vicious circle. And this is the tragedy. So ego is animal psychology, inferior nature. Without understanding that there is a superior nature and that superior nature is the soul, the soul. Consciousness, when we develop our soul, is because we have eliminated the ego. The ego has eaten our soul. We are 97% ego according to Gnostic anthropologist perceptions, and we are only 3% soul. So the situation is, we, we are here to reverse the process. We are here to eliminate the ego, and to transform the subconscious, unconscious, infraconscious, the 97% inferior nature into a superior nature or soul. We are here 
to transform, you know, unconsciousness into consciousness. We are here to create a soul, to awaken our soul, which is sleeping 24 hours a day. So the problem is, you know, through hypnotism, we make the same mistake, you know. We just, you know, transfer ignorance and subconsciousness from one part of ourselves into another part. So mm -hmm. at the end, we reinforce the ego. We, we make the ego stronger. Jim, would you say that someone who has annihilated a significant portion of the ego, and instead of now being 3% consciousness and 97%, maybe they're like 20% um, consciousness and the rest is, is ego, do you think they would be hypnotizable? I don't think so. No. 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 There are many people who cannot be hypnotized. And you know, and this is why, you know, Please pay attention to my words, okay? What's being a rebel, okay? What's being, there are two kinds of rebels. A rebel without a cause, which is most of people. People, you know, people say, I don't want to know, but will, you know, I don't want to know. But you have a potential, I don't care, you know? I, ha I, have, to, I have to work 24 hours a day and this is all what counts. And I'm having fun after that. I don't want to, in, in, you know, to become better than myself. When people don't want to improve themselves, it's because they are already hypnotized. You know, the entire, our own ego, a living entity, a living, living evil entity has hypnotized us. We are all imprisoned within our own mind. We have so many movies all the time about zombies. And uh, if you look on uh, some of the TV channels, you'll see a whole slew of movies about zombies but what we don't realize we are the zombies yeah we are <laughs> we are some kind of zombie you know even <laughs> samylon Vero described that through black magic you can bring people who are dead already uh, whose bodies are in a stage of corruption they can come back to life through black magic you know practices it sounds incredible, fantastic, ridiculous, yes, but it is real. You know, some people in some countries where they practice voodoo or black magicians, you know, who are experts in this kind of uh, knowledge, evil knowledge, they can do that. So zombies are for real. And they use it as a slaves to work in farms in certain parts of the world. But are we zombies ourselves? Well, we are very close to zombies because... You know, Jesus Christ called us, let the dead put underground their dead, which, which is, we are, we have lost our soul. Our soul is almost dead. With only 3% consciousness, we are almost dead. Yes. You see, we're sleeping really 24 hours a day. You, you mentioned voodoo. Okay. Yes. And I, I wanted to touch on that because, believe it or not, I did another podcast on one of my other websites on radionics. R-A-D-I-O-N-I-C-S, -R radionics. It's very strange. Not too many people know about it. But you mentioned voodoo, and we know that the voodoo tribes, the um, societies that practice that, uh, well, let, let's just take, if you, if you have a political... Um, a political demonstration and they take an effigy of a politician, a little doll, a paper rag doll of a politician and they call it some prime minister or or uh, leader of a country and they burn it. Okay? Well, that's voodoo. And you might think that nothing's going on. But if you have listened to the previous lectures that we've done on the different dimensions, that if you do something in the mental plane, that that has an impact. And voodooism is uh, something that's very, very negative. Uh, burning the effigy of some human being is very negative. Burning a uh, country's flag, I don't think is, is the good thing to do either because that flag has an energy to it. And that reminds me of radionics because what, what do we do in radionics? Now you have, this is a system of healing and the radionics practitioner has some equipment. She, she or he gets set up and adjusts some equipment and then does distant healing. 
and it works. It absolutely works. It's the same thing as voodoo, only the, the, the voodoo person has bad intention and wants to hurt someone. The person burning the flag or burning the effigy has bad intentions also and wants to hurt the politician. The person doing the radionics, although the mechanism is similar, does not have bad intentions. The intention is to heal. And lo and behold, we find that people do get healed. And farmers, you can use radionics to make your crops grow better. There's all kinds of uses for it. But here, all of these three things have one thing in common. They're called black magic. Samuel and Ver calls them black magic. And the reason why they're all called black magic is because we have the ego. And we may sit down at a radionics apparatus and do healing because one of our egos wants to be very, ben, you know, to help someone be healed. And that's a very positive ego. It's hard to believe that we can have egos that are, that are beneficial sometimes, but sometimes we do. We have egos that don't always want to harm people. Sometimes we want to heal people, but there's still, you know, you want to, you want to be the healer. That, that's, could very likely be uh, an ego as well, right? So yes. all of this involves the ego. All of this involves a mechanism that we've talked about in previous lectures, uh, on Gnostic lectures, which explains how and why these things could work, okay? We encourage none of our, our listeners to embark on any of these avenues because you've got a whole lot of stuff right here with Gnosis to deal with. You, uh, the amount of information that, that Samuel Hanver has given us, uh, and, and my experience with these other methodologies is that yes, they're there, yes, they work, yes, they're black magic, and they're only black magic because we still have ego. And when, whenever, if we have a radionics practitioner who's trying to broadcast a healing to someone else, for now, that's good. But what happens if that radionics practitioner should get an idea in their head to and cause harm, you know? So that's not good. As long as we have ego, we're in danger. My advice is don't bother with any of these other things. Get right to the to this very, very important critical work of annihilation of the ego because that's going to bring you down. You know, the, the, the main tragedy is that the, we have ignored all prophets and we have ignored Jesus Christ's teachings, you know. We say we are Catholic or Christian or we are Jewish, we are Jews, we are Muslims, we are Buddhists, you know. We say so many things about ourselves, but are we really you know, understanding our own perception, our religious perception or reality. And this is the problem because they were all teaching about the ego. You know, we mentioned that before in, in other lectures. Now, the problem is that if the ego doesn't die, the ego will kill us. And that's exactly what's happening today. We are facing, you know, a war after another war, another war, and, and this is the psychology of the ego. The animal psychology, the inferior nature, the self-destructive, self-destructive, you know, perception of reality. There are people who justify wars, and they invest in wars, the business of war, believing that they are angels, you know, they say, oh, there are too many people living on earth already, so we need wars. Without understanding that Mother Nature had the knowledge and the wisdom and the loving capability to when there are too many people and those too many people don't deserve to be around, Mother Nature gets rid of us. So there is a cosmic intelligence. So real angels don't do that, you see, unless they are connected with the ray of death. And of course, well, that's a different lecture that we will discuss it later. But in reality, the psychology of war is evil, 100%. When we speak about magic, don't be afraid of the word magic. That is white magic, that is black magic. Magic is coming from an ancient language, uh, you know, and the word is mag, mag, M-A-G. Mag means 
ritualizing. When you ritualize in any church, in any church, invoking divine forces, when you invoke the Christ, you invoke Moses, you invoke the prophets, you invoke, you know, Buddha, etc., etc., then that's ritualizing, that's white magic. When you ritualize invoking evil entities that are everywhere, and some people know the names of those evil entities very well, and they invoke them. Sometimes people in a position of power invoke those demons. And of course, that's black magic. The tragedy is that many people today practice black magic without knowing they are doing it. When people pay with this Ouija, Ouija games, they are invoking demons that are floating around us. You know, they are part of the inferior levels of nature. They are entities. They are not spirit spirits. So what about ghosts? I mean, have, have you seen Elvis lately? <laughs> yeah, we mentioned that before, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a ghost is the same personality. When we die, the personality stays alive for a while. But some people have a strong personality. Personality is the vehicle to communicate with other human beings, with other people. Some people have a strong personality, some people have a weak personality. Normally the ghost, you know, when we die, the ghost stays around or the personality stays around the cemetery or in the house or the apartment or the location where the people And these live. these entities have enough energy to actually become physicalized at some point and, and during certain times. That's correct. Right? That's correct. They can crystallize. Yeah. There are many stories about ghosts. Yeah. You see, and the case of a man who hadn't seen a girlfriend for many, many years, and they told him the girlfriend died or disappeared you know, from a town. This man came back 20 years later, and suddenly he met that girl. And she was drinking in a bar. He approached her and he said, don't you remember me? And she said, yeah, but she was so sad, you know. And this man was so happy that because he, he felt that that girl was important to him in the past. Well, they spent the night together in a motel. You know, this man was very happy when he woke up in the morning and the girl wasn't there. And when he came to, you know, to pay for, for the night, uh, you know, staying there and ask about the girl, they said, no, no, you, were, you came alone last night. <laughs> Come on, you know. And then he, he started looking around in the town until he was told, no, this girl died many years ago. And he was told she's in the cemetery around here. And he went there and he saw the name of that girl in the cemetery. You know, in, she, she had died many years ago, but she crystallized. And suddenly she was able to recognize him because it was the personality that lost contact 20 years ago. Incredible, fantastic, ridiculous. Well, this is based on a true story. Jim, in this country we have something called Coast to Coast Radio and uh, it is on almost every night and they talk about ghost stories, they talk about flying saucers, they talk about a lot of different things. It's amazing to listen, in, listen to some of these uh, stories and I, I believe in most of the people that call in and tell their stories, they're probably true, but they're so stupid, they don't understand anything about how the universe works. And I'm laughing when I hear some of these stories because it's so obvious to a Gnostic person what's going on, you know? Yes, yes, you're right. So basically, you know, but don't confuse the ego with the personality. They are two different, you know, uh, life manifestations. You know, there is no spirit within the personality. The, the personality will dissipate. You know, some people that were very strong during their lifetime, the personality can stay around for 100, 200, 300 years, and after it will vanish. It will disappear because it has, it has never the mortality of the spirit within. But the ego, the ego lives much longer. The ego can last for thousands and thousands of years. As I said, as we said, the ego has to be annihilated. This is an incredible, important subject to be discussed, meditated, 
you know, and so, comprehend it. So if a person has a very strong death urge, remember in one of the lectures I talked about rebirthing, okay? The one, the one thing I didn't tell you about in rebirthing is when you're breathing, we talked about pranayama, and you can remember when you were born. But the other part, the negative part of that, is that you also come in contact with a very strong death urge, okay? And many people who have gotten into rebirthing as, uh, as a practice have committed suicide. And so here's the thing. If you, if you have an ego that's that strong, a suicidal e ego, we probably all do somewhere, um, if you do commit suicide, you can't escape that ego because in your ne next lifetime, that ego is going to be there again at the, probably the exact same time. Yep, you know? yeah, that's, a, that's correct. You know, Samaylon Veor described that when people commit suicide, you know, they will die in the next life exactly at the time they committed suicide. They can be the most successful people on earth. They can maybe they became billionaires, but they will die mysteriously at the same age where they committed suicide in a past life. And this is a horrible situation to be understood, comprehended. Jim, you said one time also that over a period of time, people become more and more with ego and therefore more and more evil as time progresses, right? Yes. And what I'm looking at is when I was a little boy, we had tele... Actually, I, when I was a little boy, we had radio. Believe it or not, that's how old I am. Television programming was black and white and we had Father Knows Best leave it to beaver nice little programs like that i've noticed over the time not only tv programs but movies have gotten more and more into killing 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 it seems like w we turn on the tv at night every tv program involves killing or murder of some kind and i noticed there's there's a, a shift in tv watching patterns that now at this current time Many people are interested in reality shows, cooking shows where they, they compete with each other, uh, dancing shows where they're dancing with each other, and the best dan dancer gets to stay on for the next show, and it's a competition every show. Uh, singing contests, okay? Right now, reality shows are probably as popular as anything else. Now... I think degeneration is going to continue another decade from now. What kind of reality shows will, will we be watching? Will we be watching people being murdered or killed on television sets? Is that in our future? Well, basically, it's happening already. You know, there are a few movies from Hollywood where you see a lot of killing, you know, horror movies. <coughs> and serial killers. It seems like our egos that, that are related to that are just hungry for that information, right? Yeah, you know, and the trouble is, you know, people who don't understand their own ego, they become excited going to see a movie like that, even if they see it only once. But people are so bored with their own lifestyle that they need some kind of excitement and they confuse excitement with being, you know, uh, cruel to themselves, you know, and the trouble is people become desensitized because it's already proven that criminals get inspired in other criminals who committed horrendous crimes. So they are copycats. So we are promoting crime by, you know, developing these kind of stories on, on the screen. And of course, we are entering into a stage of a deeper and deeper degeneration because the ego is part of the you know, the opposite of evolution is involution. It's a stage of degeneration, psychological degeneration, physical de degeneration. Cancer, you know, is multiplying everywhere. Mental illness is developing everywhere. Why? You know, everybody's under stress. Everybody, you know, is depressed today. And this is why people are looking for some kind of excitement. But the trouble is they believe these kind of movies will heal them and they produce the opposite. They develop, you know, more and more hatred against themselves and against other people. You know, and that's collective suicide. This is why, you know, a nuclear war is 
something that could happen in the near future because our political leaders of the world are not free of this kind of influence, egotistic influence. They are also in prison within this kind of collective suicidal you know, perception of reality. It's like intelligent people today, they say life has no meaning. Come on, university professors say that. Life has no meaning. Well, we say the opposite. We don't agree with them. Leaders of the world, you know, we don't agree with you if you say life has no meaning. Life is not a game. Life is a serious matter. Let's learn to live. And the only way to learn to live is Mother Nature gave us the opportunity to grow psychologically, to ascend, to ascend. How can we incorporate more and more aspects of the divinity within ourselves, which is becoming more and more spiritual? How do we spiritualize matter? How do we crystallize the spirit so we can become one kind of superior being? And then we get closer to the divinity. This is the purpose of life. So increasing our consciousness, awakening our soul, which is sleeping 24 hours a day, is a, the great purpose of life. So that's the hope that we can give to anyone listening to this podcast is, yes, there is a way of annihilating the ego. And we, we don't give this information out in early um, podcasts, but I'm sure down the road, Jim, you will have a podcast dealing with the exact procedure on how to annihilate the ego. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, Samael Ambeo recommends, you know, we can develop our own technique to annihilate the ego. But in a few words, we have to be very sincere with ourselves. Don't tell lies to yourself. Write down what is said that you have. Write down your virtues and write down your defects, your vices, your errors. And separate them clearly. I'm an alcoholic or do I have the tendency to become an alcoholic? Am I brutalizing my own family? I'm a violent individual. Do I have a lot of anger or even a lot of hatred within myself? What about my loving capability? Do I really love my family? This is all important to understand. Elements of the soul, elements of the ego. You know? And as you, um, later on, when you get the, the methodology for destruction of the ego, which uh, we're not going to do that in this podcast, but when that happens, and you begin annihilating the ego, you'll find that your world around you will improve, won't it? Of course, of course. As you said it before, not everybody can be hypnotized. I refuse to be hypnotized. I've been before many powerful individuals who's, you know, in a theater, crowded, and they made a lot of people before my eyes hypnotized. And they were acting like zombies, as you said it, you know. They lose totally, totally their consciousness and the man, the hypnotizer, you know, click their, their, his fingers and people woke up and they started to do incredible things. Well, it sounded, it looked very interesting, but when I entered into the stage to be hypnotized, he couldn't do it. So he asked me to come back to my chair in the theater. So basically, you know, it's up to us. Instead of developing the powers of the mind, don't do that because this is black magic. The ego has already infiltrated our mind, is controlling our even the way we think. We have to develop the powers of the soul. Soul is consciousness, awareness, you know, connected with the divinity, connected with love, with respect, with superior values, you know, and not to do the opposite. You spoke of the new biology. Now, once we start eliminating the ego and we chip away at it and systematically day after day uh, meditate and chip away and start destroying the ego, well, we discover a new biology, don't we? Yeah, basically, you know, our scientists, our doctors should learn, you know, when they practice medicine, should learn, should, should understand that life has a purpose also. They should have the, a clear philosophy about the purpose of life, which is growing up psychologically, growing up in our soul. And when we do that, when we eliminate the ego, we will perceive that the three brains, we don't have one brain, we have three brains, the intellectual, the motor brain, and the emotional brain. 
when we balance the three brains, we discover that these brains have to be completed because they are incomplete. And through certain practices, we can really develop the three brains and to unite them into one more powerful brain. We can say we are a spark, a divine spark of light, superior kind of light and fire. We have to transform the spark into a flame. And to do that, we have seven endocrine glands. The seven endocrine glands are attached to the spine. This is why the seven endocrine glands, you know, have to be also regenerated because they enter into a stage of degeneration. Same thing with the brain. Number three is the law of creation. Number seven, the law of organization. So we are already created and we need to recreate ourselves, to complete, because we are an incomplete. We have only the blueprint of a complete human being. And the seven endocrine glands atrophied are the, also the blueprint to recreate them to reconstruct ourselves and to create a true human being, a superior human being that will have 12 senses instead of five senses, seven superior senses. And this is the point. So the new biology should point into that direction. How do we help the entire human race, including ourselves, to ascend into the kingdom of the real humans and to walk away from the animal kingdom? Because Right now we are half away. Are we humans? We are not. What are we? We are just intellectual animals. We don't like it? Well, this is the true reality. Look at our psychology. We behave like animals. Take the intellect away. And what happens? You see, we are intellectual animals. So when we develop the real human psychology, and Jesus Christ was teaching about that, the seven virtues of the spirit, are the opposite of the seven deadly sins. The seven deadly sins are the animal psychology and evil psychology because we don't deserve to continue being animals. We are half away ascending into the real human's kingdom. So when we eliminate the ego, we'll be able to construct or to make them appear because they've been always there. It's our soul eaten by the ego. When the soul is awakened, the seven virtues will appear, you know, before our own eyes. We'll be applying them, we'll be using them, we'll be understanding life from a different angle, a different point of view. The day will eliminate wars on the face of the earth. That day, the entire human race will be moving faster into the real human being's kingdom. Well, we're trying to condense down, as I said, an awful lot of information that Samuel Anvers has given to the world into lectures. But the average student of Gnosis is stuck with, well, what are the most important parts? And to answer that, I would say the three factors of the revolution of the consciousness. There are three components that we will be teaching in the future. One is sacrifice for humanity, which pays for it. The other is transmutation of the energy, which provides us uh, divinity, brings divinity within. And the third factor is annihilation of the ego. So those are the three components that are probably the most important parts. Would you agree? Yes, that's correct. You know, if we study the Ten Commandments, this is synthesized within the, the Ten Commandments of Moses, even they are more than Ten Commandments. When Jesus Christ said, if you want to come after me, number one, deny yourself, which is annihilation of the ego. Take your cross every day. The mystery of the cross is being able to cross the spirit with matter, with the superior nature, is to spiritualize matter and to crystallize the spirit, to become one. And this is something that we will be able to explain slowly, slowly, to be able to comprehend it better. And number three is sacrifice for humanity, which is sharing the entire, you know, knowledge with the entire human race, which is included within every religion. All religions have been teaching the same principles. There is no difference. There is no difference. Which is learning to spiritualize matter, learning to crystallize the spirit. So that's the mystery of the cross. It's a cross. Ancient religions were teaching also about the cross. 
you see, the problem is people never understood the, the real meaning of that. So you spoke of the word magic as being something that uh, a lot of people, would, when they hear the word magic, they think, oh, well, it's sort of like aliens used to be. Oh, here's some Looney Tunes talking about some stuff that doesn't exist. But in reality, magic has always been with us. It's just recently that we've lost the ability to perform some of these things. Basically, the magic happens internally. Yes, that's correct. As, as I said, you know, magic means ritualizing. If we invoke divine forces, it's white magic. If we invoke evil forces, it's black magic. Well, if you swear, I mean, just cursing and swearing is actually magic because you're going to bring negative vibrations within you. That's correct. Hatred is black magic. Yeah. The seven deadly sins is black magic. So if we never eliminate the ego, we are all black magicians. Can evil. I, we become evil individuals. Can I tell a quick little story? It's very short. It has to do with annihilation of a small little ego, right? I was on a public transport uh, a bus and I was listening to an MP3 player and this very a bothersome person sat next to me and he was mentally ill and he kept talking in a very loud voice so loud that I had difficulty hearing my mp3 player and guess what anger came up and I being a Gnostic a student of course let's annihilate the anger this guy wouldn't shut up he kept talking and I and my my anger for him built up and built up and finally I said well, let's annihilate this ego right now. And I went through a process, as Gnosis teaches, and a miracle happened. I never said a word to this man, never never gestured anything to him. He shut up. I just eliminated the ego, and the man shut up. Can you imagine that? Yeah, it's essentially, you know, first you were observing yourself, your reaction toward the environment surrounding you. Self-observation is awakening our consciousness because we don't even see our errors, our mistakes. We don't see, you know, our vices. We justify them. But in this case, you were observing yourself. Number two, you comprehended that individual. He had trouble with himself. He couldn't keep quiet. When you comprehended him, you transformed your sense of feeling offended, you transform it into loving and respecting that individual because he really was in trouble with himself. So self-observation and self-comprehension contributed in an incredible way to, you know, block the, those egos and eventually to learn to annihilate them. I've had other situations where, um, for many years actually, I would get angry with drivers that were in front of me and I wanted to go like at a certain speed and every time somebody would pull out of a side street and go slow in front of me and that built up anger and hatred and it was a long time before I realized that hey this is an ego and you know what I destroyed that and another miracle happened nobody pulled in front of me very much anymore after that and went slow. <laughs> it's just amazing, you know? Yes, yes it is. Because in reality, we don't realize that we have all kinds of energies within ourselves and the ego has its own energies, negative energies, destructive and self-destructive energies. But the soul is the opposite. The soul has creative, res you know, res uh, respectable and loving, loving energies. And of course, you know, that's real wisdom, that's real consciousness. That's awakening our soul, developing our soul. When we do that, we can influence, you know, bad people, evil people, and we can even, you know, transform an enemy into a friend. It's incredible, the power of love. Well, this is one of the things they teach in martial arts all the time, isn't it? Um, That's you, you learn how to fight, you become a very good warrior, but then the highest teachings in martial arts are how to neutralize your enemy but basically you're destroying that within yourself first, right? That's correct. When you, when you have no fear, you know, because the ego is pure fear. People who have a strong ego, they believe they are very strong, you know, and they are not because they are fearful individuals. Actually, people who are very cowards, they have a strong ego. 
you see, and they justify themselves, you know, with their, you know, manipulative behavior, believing that they are superior to other people, when it's the opposite. According to some people who met Samael on Veror, he was a man without ego. He annihilated the ego 100%. He was a good example, you know, and I met his wife. She was a lady with a tremendous, powerful presence. And physically, she looked like a common lady. She looked very similar to Mother Teresa, you know, that lived in India. And this lady, you know, even he didn't pretend to be powerful. He was extremely powerful. I saw incredible things, you know, coming from her. In one occasion, an individual in Montreal, Canada, uh, wanted to talk to her. The man came from nowhere, from the street. There was a, a meeting in a public place, and she was surrounded by students around her. And suddenly a big man came into that place and wanted to talk to her. And when we tried to block that man walking towards her, he was so strong that he found a way to touch that lady when she, he was holding her by the shoulders, that man became paralyzed. He couldn't do anything. And he realized that that lady was a true master of the White Lodge. A lady, you know, a lady master and with a powerful, powerful presence and with incredible superior senses because in another opportunity maybe we'll be talking more about herself. Well, what would the student have to look forward to in the upcoming Gnostic lectures? Jim, do you have any ideas what subjects you're going to cover or do you, do you want to just leave that go for now? Sincerely, I would love to be able to develop 50 lectures minimum because there is so much to say. And also recommending our students, people who are going to be in touch with us, to buy the books of Sam Island Veor that are being translated into many languages already. And, and we can, you know, we find a way to, to give more and more instruction about Gnostic anthropology and as the new culture, the new philosophy, the new psychology, the new biology, the new science, and even the religion from heaven, which is all religions included, you see, and also a cosmic art, a superior kind of art included within Gnostic anthropology. If, if people realize that we're not alone in the universe, there are many people who believe that there are extraterrestrials out there. The religion of the universe is Gnosis, isn't it? It is. Yeah, and, there is only one religion in the universe. And that's what Samuel Enver has brought to us, and that's what we are trying to convey here. Yeah, also, you know, in the superior dimensions, we can call them the parallel universes connected with heaven. There is only one religion. You know, superior beings, angelical beings, archangelical beings, the Elohim, they go to temples of the White Lodge. And there is only one religion, one cosmic religion, which is the one that all religions on earth have taken little pieces here and there and then that have been, you know, twisted through a poor interpretation through the centuries. And the trouble is, you know, we are all responsible for it because not only religious leaders are responsible, but all of us who, you know, who don't contribute to clarify this situation. I'd like to mention Walter Russell because we have spoken about him off and on here and there throughout our previous podcasts and he I would like to say that his mission on earth was not to bring Gnosis to the world at all his mission was very limited and those uh, students or those people who are familiar with Walter Russell's work realize that he brought a tremendous science to the world the science of the cosmos the science the real authentic science and he his mission on earth was not to bring gnosis at all his mission was only to bring the science and a lot of people uh, i think are not clear on the notion that 
Walter Russell's mission was extremely limited. He was not allowed to talk about certain things. He was not allowed to go into certain areas. He sugar-coated his message to the world by basically saying that we are um, haven't evolved enough, that uh, eventually in thousands of years from now we, we will evolve and we, we will all become geniuses, which is totally, totally, totally incorrect. Uh, Walter Russell gave everyone the impression that that we are uh, animals and we haven't uh, evolved sufficiently to become uh, enlightened yet. And the error there is that people think, well, we don't have don't have to do anything at all because just uh, in lifetime after lifetime, eventually we, we will become like Jesus. No, absolutely wrong. Samuel and Ver's mission was to bring a much larger body of knowledge to the human race, and that includes the sexology, as well as the notion that you will not evolve into uh, enlightenment. You must effort tremendously to get to that level. Yes, you're right. You know, we, we already said it in another lecture, evolution, involution, revolution. You see, there Samael explains clearly that there are many people who believe in evolution so much. Uh, it's not only Mr. Darwin, but there are many other schools, philosophical schools, that are totally convinced, as you said it, Rick, we are all going to become angels in the future, which is wrong, totally wrong. You know, Samael Onveor mentions that Mr. Pasteur, Louis Pasteur, criticized Darwin. Pasteur said that Mr. Darwin never saw the opposite of evolution, which is involution. You know, evolution is an ascension. Involution is a descension. It's coming down, you know, because there is no straight light, a straight line in the universe. There is only a curve. So what goes up eventually will go down. And this is exactly what's happening to the entire human race and also to all the species. What you're trying to say is we're on a Ferris wheel. If, if anyone's ever been to a carnival and you've been on a Ferris wheel, well, they let you on the seat at the very bottom and the wheel turns around and you come up toward the top. And we, right now we're at the top and we have an opportunity, 108 lifetimes is our uh, return opportunities that we have. Once we've expired those, we're still on the top of the Ferris wheel. If we don't get off and ascend, we're going to continue on the Ferris wheel down the other side. Yeah, the, the tragedy right now is that we are not at the top, you know, we are descending. We are entering into a stage of degeneration, yeah. involution. Now, the other problem is that people are, you know, are convinced that through evolution, we are, as we said, we are going to get into a higher stage. Now, we are the the highest species on earth but superior beings like angelical beings or complete human beings or archangels or elohim powerful superior individual who can rule planets solar systems constellations galaxies and even groups of galaxies there are superior individuals superior individuals who have that kind of knowledge and power and wisdom now to get there evolution is not enough so just to move into the real human being's kingdom, we need a tremendous process of regeneration because generation is not enough. Degeneration is not enough. We need to regenerate, to understand that we, there is something wrong with us. We need to correct ourselves. So another word for replacing regeneration is revolution. Re Don't be afraid of the word. We're not talking about bloody revolutions. We are talking about revolutions of the consciousness, revolution of the soul. You know, we need to revolve within ourselves and to make it, as you said it, Rick, make a tremendous, tremendous effort to ascend. And to get there, we have to annihilate the ego, which is a very tough work, a very heavy job to be done within ourselves. Well, we've covered an awful lot of material here. Uh, thank you very much for listening to this podcast. Uh, Jim spoke about the books of Samuel Unver. They are available 
at GnosticTeachings.org. And I would like to invite you to our website, RickyRadio.com. The email, GnosticRadio at gmail.com. Thank you very much, Jim, and thank you to our listeners. Thank you very much, Rick. It's been an honor again. And thank you for our you know, dialogue and thanks to our audience.